Good afternoon. My name is Joe Welch, founder and CEO of In Good Taste. Today, we've got a really special treat. We are going to be drinking through our new Cascade collection from Washington. Now, we named this collection after the Cascade Mountain Range, which is so crucial in Washington's winemaking and is responsible for the unique style and quality that they represent. Now, over the last decade, Washington has become one of the premier wine growing regions in the United States. And they're particularly known for their quality to price ratio. You can get great wines for a really, really affordable price point, um, which is one of the reasons I personally love to buy them. Now, unlike normal tastings, we're actually going to be tasting barrel samples. These wines haven't been bottled yet, they haven't been labeled yet. Our winemaker pulled them straight from their barrels, straight from their stainless steel tanks and gave me some samples so I could try them before we put the wine in bottle and see how they change over time. So your wines may differ slightly because during bottling, we make sure to filter and finish the wine so that it's as pure and as, as pure of imperfections as possible. Now the first wines we're gonna be trying are our Pinot Gris, our Riesling, and our Rosé. It's a Rosé of Syrah. And these all come from the Columbia Valley, but more specifically, they come from Rattlesnake Canyon. Apart from being an awesome name, Rattlesnake Canyon is a super unique terroir that has loamy volcanic soil and generally sits at higher elevation than most of the rest of the Columbia Valley, which is the big wine growing region in Washington. So let's start with the Pinot Gris. Now you might remember from our Advent videos that Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio are the same grape, but just slightly different winemaking styles. A Pinot Grigio will be a little bit lighter and a little bit more acidic, whereas a Pinot Gris we can expect to have a little bit more body and definitely a little bit more color. I would call this a medium body Pinot Gris. It's definitely not going to punch you in the face with acidity. It's got a really smooth mouth feel um, and it's very floral. I'd recommend this with any sort of burrata toast. We actually had this incredible goat cheese and blood orange toast with hot honey the other day that I think this would pair really, really well with. Moving on, we are gonna go to our Riesling. Now my winemaker told me that this Riesling is his favorite wine in the entire collection. Riesling grows really well in Washington because while they do have a diennial shift, meaning that it is hot during the day and it's cold at night, it's more pronounced in Washington than it is even in Napa Valley. And so it gets really, really cold at night and can get very, very hot during the day. Riesling likes cold weather. It grows really well in upstate New York. It grows really well in Germany and it loves very mountainous terrain. That's great. I probably actually should have had this first because it's definitely a little bit lighter than the Pinot Gris, um, but it's not overly sweet. Riesling developed a reputation for being a very sweet wine uh, in the early and late 90s, but now a lot of producers and the highest quality producers are producing bone dry Riesling. This has a tiny bit of sweetness, but I would not call this sweet at all. I wouldn't say it's bone dry. Again, my mouth isn't watering after tasting this, but it's really, really well balanced, which is what we love to see in a representative wine such as this. Swordfish, I think, would actually be really nice with this Riesling because it is a big, of, bit of a bigger, meatier fish. And this has a little bit more body than maybe a traditional Germanic or Austrian Riesling. Now we are moving on to our Rosé of Syrah. And this is gonna be fun because right after this, we are gonna be tasting the Syrah that is made in its red wine form. So both of these, again, are from Columbia Valley. And we like to say that Syrah has a, likes a view. Syrah will almost always grow at the top of the valley. So when you look at the valley, the, the vineyards that are closest to the edge of the valley or the crest of the valley are most likely going to be Syrah. And the base of the valley, the floor, will be Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, which we'll be drinking next. So these Syrah are going to come from the, this, both the Rosé of Syrah and the, the traditional Syrah will come from the top of the valley. And the final two wines are going to come from the floor of the valley. Syrah is kind of unique to make a rosé out of just because it is a heavy red wine grape. You have to be very careful so that you don't pull too much color or too much tannin from the skins of the grape. But this color is really nice. It's not as pale pink as maybe a Provence style rosé. Um, it's a little bit darker, a little bit bolder. Let's give this a chance. I, I mean, I get a lot of like almost juicy fruit coming out of this. I almost get apricot, like tangerine, um, a lot of orange fruits weirdly enough. But let's give this a try.
that's really enjoyable. It's bone dry. Um, the apricot definitely comes through. The tangerine actually comes through in a flavor as well. Uh, and it's a really, really smooth wine. So um, both approachable from just an individual glass standpoint, but also from a pairing perspective. Um, I would go, I would go with like a carrot tahini dip and maybe some pita bread, maybe some Mediterranean food would go really, really well with this wine. Moving into the red wines, we are starting with the Syrah. That is the same grapes used to make that rosé, uh, but this is the Syrah in its traditional form. Um, traditionally, Syrah is very peppery. A lot of people say it smells like a charcuterie board, and we're gonna see how this one stacks up. Washington is known for its Syrah. Syrah, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon are probably the three most famous varietals coming out of the Columbia Valley right now. This is less peppery than I was expecting. So it doesn't actually scream charcuterie board. Um, this is actually a little bit fruitier. I get more like black currant, almost a little bit of leather, almost more, almost more Cabernet-like than maybe traditional Syrah. Uh, but let's give this a try. So this is lighter than I expected. Um, being a 2021 Syrah, means that it's young and a lot of the times a young Syrah or a young Cab are going to have a lot of tannin that make your mouth really grippy and leathery and this is really smooth um, it's really smooth it's got a very clean short finish and I think this is ready to drink right now this doesn't need any aging this is going to be good to go as soon as your, your kid arrives I mean this would go great with pork chops pork chops and apples and Syrah are a really famous combination works really really well because there are some tannins so you want something to cut the fat and this isn't so overpowering that it's going to take away from the meal, which is important when you're pairing food with wine. You want them to complement each other, not take over for each other. We're going to go with our Merlot next because I'm a huge Merlot fan. And while it may be shunned upon thanks to Sideways, I think it's one of the best value wines you can buy. It's absolutely delicious. Uh, it's not being overproduced anymore. It's being produced at the right levels and can be a really, really enjoyable wine. And Washington State is known for their Merlot. One of my favorite wines that we ever made was a Merlot from Washington State, from Columbia Valley. Uh, different producer, different vineyard, a little bit lower in elevation than where this one was purchased. But I'm hoping this stacks up to it because that one was one of my personal favorites. I wouldn't say this is as good as my favorite Merlot, but it's definitely enjoyable. It's right in the alley that I like. I'm getting a little bit more kind of current, similar to the Syrah. Um, but definitely a lot more blackberry and a lot more plum than what we got in the Syrah. The Syrah was dark currant all the way. This is more plum, a little bit more fruit backing it up. And again, more medium to heavy bodied for a red wine. It's not all the way to a super tanny full bodied wine. Alcohol percentage is a little bit lower and that's one of the reasons. Yeah, I could enjoy that for a long time. I mean, again, that's going to go great with any of your traditional pairings. Whether it's steak, uh, I think this would go really good with pizza, actually, because pizza can be very fatty and very oily, and it doesn't quite cut through. It doesn't have enough fat to cut through a Cabernet Sauvignon, but could cut through a lighter tannin wine like this Merlot. Last but not least, we've got our Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, this is where Washington State's really excelled, is quality Cabernet Sauvignon for really affordable prices. These are grown at the very floor of the Columbia Valley. They love the long exposure to heat. And it's important to remember that, you know, Washington's a big state. While most people think of Seattle, they think of coastlines, half of the state is a desert. And the Columbia Valley sits on the leeward side of the mountain range, which means that all the rain stops right before it gets to the Columbia Valley. And it leaves a very dry and arid climate, which grapes love. They want to struggle to grow roots. They want to go as deep as possible because when they do that, they pull out a more concentrated flavor. And that's really helped their Cabernet Sauvignon excel on the world stage. So let's give this a try. This is the last wine of the kit. I hope you enjoy it. And if you've got any questions, let us know. And please let us know how these wines change from when I'm tasting them for the first time straight from the barrel to when you get to enjoy them after they've gone through the full winemaking process. They're bottled, they're labeled, and I'm, I'm curious to see how they evolve uh, between now and then. This almost would have tricked me for a Napa Valley Cab if it weren't for the finish. It had the leather, it had the tobacco, it had the blackberry, all the really traditional you know, Cabernet Sauvignon aromas, but it's much, it's got much less tannin than a Napa Valley Cab. And I believe that our winemaker styled it for this reason because he wants you to drink it sooner rather than later. And generally tannin is 
prevalent in wines that you want to age. If you put a lot of tannin into a wine, it can be hard to drink when it's young, but it'll age beautifully. This definitely has tannin. It's got decent structure and decent body, but the finish is a little bit shorter and it doesn't, again, overpower your mouth or overpower your taste buds. Here in Northern California, we love tri-tip, like a barbecue tri-tip sandwich with this cab, I think would just be spectacular. Um, but it's going to be a really unique wine for you guys to try, and I really hope you enjoy it. So thank you for listening. This is our Cascade collection. We're so excited to bring it back. It's one of our most popular collections we've ever released, and we've only got a limited number of kits here. So please, if you like the wines, stock up now. They will sell out. And cheers. Thank you for joining me.